Hello again, it's me, Catrice Horsley, with my book recommendations. And as I said in the first episode of the recommendations, some of these books are about how to help you tell better stories. Some of these books are about us finding out more about the stories of others. And some of these books are to do with where you might find traditional stories or myths in uh, various collections. So I hope you're enjoying it so far. And as I said, um, please drop me a line either via my website, which is www.narrative4, number four, change.com. Um, um, all, all together uh, and tell me what you think about the books and whether they have enriched your work practice and your lives as much as they have mine because they have it's it's amazing um number four is today i believe and it is this resplendently beautiful book braiding sweetgrass by robin wall kimmerer and she is a, an indigenous person from North America, uh, a scientist, a, a mother. Uh, how does she describe herself? Mother scientist, decorated professor and enrolled member of the citizen Potawatomi Nation. She lives in Syracuse, New York, where she is a SUNY distinguished teaching professor of environmental biology and the founder and director of the Center for Native Peoples and the Environment. And what this book did for me, as well as enabling me to breathe in and breathe out uh, and have a pause of connection, it affirmed for me the power of ancient myths and stories in teaching us lessons and sharing messages with us that are vital to us today in this present world. This book was a reason that I wrote the three blogs, that triptych of blogs all about disconnection and how we are disconnected from each other, from our own bodies, and from our physical environments, from the natural world. This book triggered all of that for me. And let me just read you a, a little bit from it so you can get a flavor of it. Um, she talks about traditional ecological knowledge of indigenous harvesters being rich in prescriptions for sustainability. It is not new. Um, they are found in native science and philosophy, in life ways and practices, but most of all in stories, the ones that are told to help restore balance, to locate ourselves once again in the circle of life and death and rebirth. Um, she goes on to describe a story about an Anishinaabe elder, um, Basil Johnston. Uh, he told that story um, about a heron and a fisherman and how a heron uh, gave advice to a fisherman about how he could better catch fish, but warned the fisherman not to catch too many. Um, but the fisherman did not heed that advice. And he ended up day after day stuffing himself and the lake grew empty and his drying racks grew full, uh, sending out a delicious smell into the forest where Fox was licking his lips. Again, the fisherman went to the lake so proud of himself, but that day his nets came up empty and Heron looked down on him as he flew over the lake with a critical eye. When Nana Boza, the name of the fisherman, got home to his lodge, he learned a key rule, never take more than you need. The racks of fish were toppled in the dirt and every bite was gone. And what uh, Robin goes on to say is that these cautionary stories, cautionary stories of the consequences of taking too much are ubiquitous in native cultures, but it's hard to recall a single one in English. Perhaps this helps to explain why we seem to be caught in a trap of overconsumption, which is as destructive to ourselves as to those we consume. This book also made me think about who was involved 
when I ate the food that was on my plate in front of me. Um, I even wrote a poem about a fish finger sandwich honoring everybody and everything, um, everything in the more than human world who was active in that fish finger sandwich being on my plate from the people who drove the vehicles, from the bees who pollinated the wheat um, or the crops, from the people who fished, from the people who made the nets, from young children undoubtedly working in mines, taking up chemicals to create the satellite navigation systems for the lorries, for the transportation. And it went on and on and on and on and on and on. And it really made me think of how connected we are to everybody far more now than we ever were before. And yet we live in a time where we feel disconnected. And for me, this is a vital role um, in, in the telling of stories and myths. Uh, a, a vital component of it is looking at how these myths and how these fairy stories enabled us to connect with the natural world around us. Um, they came from times when the natural world was animate, when animals and trees spoke to us. And we now think of those things as strange and a little bit odd and a little bit, uh, yeah, hippie. I want to say that word, it's not right. Um, and yet, I don't know when, when it was that we stopped rating reason and logic and science as higher on a hierarchical scale as the human attributes of empathy and intuition and all of those things that make us human. So really wonderful book. Please let me know what you thought of it. Please read it and follow her. She's on her social media as well. You take care for now. She's also been on a lot of podcasts. So if you search her name on podcasts, you'll get some lovely stuff come up. Take care for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>